busy, interesting week here during the climate weeks. We hope you will uh, have a good time learning more about many of our organizations, members, uh, and their various blockchain initiatives, in some cases pilots, in some cases research. So um, for the first um, hour or so, we'll give uh, that overview and then uh, have a public uh, reception afterwards and give an opportunity to network with the various members and learn more about what they're doing. And so just very quickly, I'll give a quick introduction about the Climate Change Coalition and then um, uh, invite others to come up and speak. So the coalition started at COP23 in Bonn, um, Germany uh, in November 2017. And within three weeks, uh, or I should say at COP23, there was so much activity related to blockchain that it was impossible to actually go to all of the events. And the Climate Change Secretariat uh, had communicated that they would be overwhelmed with interest from various stakeholders and how could blockchain be used to improve and accelerate the uh, Paris Agreement activities uh, around transparency and markets and so on. And so at that point, we uh, had enough interest amongst different organizations to bring together uh, a group of uh, 12 founding organizations. Many, many of them are here, and they can speak to that afterwards. Uh, at the One Planet Summit in Paris, so on the second anniversary of the Paris Agreement, so we had a founding, uh, founding meeting of the Climate Change Coalition, and we had created a charter to help uh, guide how blockchain would evolve for applications in the climate space, and uh, as uh, a commitment by the Secretary, they came to co-chair the, the coalition uh, with members and over the last uh, almost two years, I guess I remember it would be two years, um, we're getting about two members per week joining the coalition in the It's a multi stakeholder network, so it's not only blockchain startups, there's universities doing research, there's government members, there's industry, there's small environmental NGOs. It's covering about 40 different countries around the world, which is great because in looking at blockchain, it's not simply a technology issue. There's uh, a lot of non-technical uh, issues that need to be addressed as well. Governance, as one example, um, and you'll hear more about that with the uh, next presentations. And so what the coalition aims to do is to facilitate the network building, the partnership building amongst members, but also with their stakeholders uh, through knowledge exchange, supporting research, and pilots. And so the um, Coalition is open to organizations to join as members, uh, and other stakeholders can also uh, get involved through our LinkedIn groups and our social media as well, so that you can come to these types of events, uh, learn more about the products that are being developed uh, by the coalition and through the membership as well. And so, with that very brief introduction, in order to allow more time for speakers, I'd like to first invite Hank Rogers to come. Uh, and say a few words. His uh, organization, the Blue Planet Foundation, the Planet uh, Alliance, generally, generously sponsored this uh, event for us. And so, uh, thank you very much, Andrew. Please.
So, but having said that, 2045 is still five years ahead of where IPCC would like us to go 100% renewable. So it's not a bad day, and yet and my son uh, pointed out that actually 2045 is a really good day because it's the 100th anniversary of the United Nations. Yeah. What better outcome of 100 years of the United Nations than to solve climate change, and in my opinion, everything else. So we've, we're helping other states, the Blue Planet Foundation's helping other states, but working within the US, in the US is different from working in, for example, China. We can do grassroots movements in the U.S. Grassroots movements in China end up disappearing, and so we have to have a whole different approach for, for different jurisdictions. And I think the same thing goes for data. You know, like the data that we have here that's based on uh, how can I say Freedom of Information Act. We have access to data. In fact, what we do in Hawaii, we do a report card every year. We send interns into every agency or every every group and get the information. These are just basically college students, and they get information. And as far as we know, the information is true, because it's kind of that way in this country. Um, and we collate that data, we make a report card every year. And that report card basically sum, is the sum of everything that's going in Hawaii that's got to do with efficiency, transportation, uh, renewable energy, penetration, and all that. Um, so the question is, how do we do that in other countries? And that's your job. I, I, I get it. You're going to find a way to get that, that information anyway, despite the system of government. And, uh, and because we're flipping states, I'm OK with what's going on in this country. We're moving in the right direction. Um, and so I'm setting up an alliance. Uh, it's called the Blue Planet Alliance. And the Blue Planet Alliance is going to do the same thing we did in the states, but with countries. It's a whole different picture because, again, countries are completely different from states. They have different systems of government, some have, I mean, who knows what's going on. I've been to islands where there's no such thing as a PUC or, or any kind of regulation of any kind. So how do you get data? Who has that data? Nobody has the data. And so where do we go from here? And part of it, I think, um, if we can figure out how to do something along the lines of citizen science, where citizens pick up that data, and then we create a, a data collection mechanism that involves a smartphone. Everybody in the world has a smartphone, almost. Uh, then we can start getting data from all over the world. And we can check the veracity of that data by comparing it to data that's actually collected by scientists. And the idea there is that we can get a huge amount of data from a huge number of people. And, uh, and maybe that data will be better than the data that we get as propaganda from some governments. Um, Again, I'm going to leave you guys to do what you do. Uh, I'm trying to flip governments. If I don't have real information, if I don't have real information about every country at the end of the day, then when I go to speak to them and say, this is the thing that's happening in your country, my, my conversation is going to be meaningless because I don't have real information. In order for us to take real action, we need real information. So please help us out with that. Uh, according to Blue Planet Alliance, you guys are all part of the Blue Planet Alliance already. Uh, all you have to do is be working on it, and we're going to fix everything by 2045. Thank you very much. Thanks again, uh, Nate, for those words and for sponsoring this event. And your point about having real data and blockchain and other digital solutions go hand in hand, of course. And it's not that simple. Our next speaker that uh, invite up, uh, Martin Weinstein of Yale uh, Open Innovation Labs, to speak more to the context of how blockchain and related digital solutions apply to a whole range of climate actions, accounting, markets, finance, and so on. So I can invite you, Martin, to please come up with it. Uh, Tom, thanks Nick, again. It's very exciting to be here. I'm going to change uh, the screens uh, really quick. Um, and, oh. um, and we did an event this morning. Um, and I don't know if there's people also joining in via Zoom. Let me just check the Zoom link. Um, those are not going to be um, so 
So we did an event this morning, which was particularly inspiring. Um, um, the this week and the type of multiple stakeholders that we're having to meeting here today, and uh, the invited guests that came in this morning. Um, like Tom said, um, a couple of years ago I started the Yale Open Innovation Lab, which sits uh, between the Sci Center for Innovative Thinking at Yale and the Center for Business and the Environment. And our general thesis uh, comes from the fact that in order to solve and address global planetary and potential challenges, we can only do that through rapid collaboration. And, uh, uh, often innovation has been driven by mindset of competition. So we need to understand holistically how do we change that paradigm. Um, and so this morning with our colleagues from the Data Human Environment Policy Lab, uh, we shared a bit of what's been, uh, what we've been working on in the exploration of the intersection of blockchain and climate for the last year. Um, the premise, uh, the way we, um, we often frame this is that we need a, a global climate accounting system um, because it's, it's the key records of what's happening and who's doing it and, and who said they were going to do what. That is a common layer where we can build a lot of things on top. Um, as, um, as a university research center, we try to um, be stewards of, of the role of integrating multiple stakeholders, but also thinking in terms of uh, system integration. That's, that's part of what the, the lab focuses on. And uh, for this, the specific focus has been around transparent, decentralized, and open source. I can't stress open source that much. Um, but so we've been exposed to different emerging technologies, and uh, about a year ago, we started really thinking uh, more around the role that blockchain can have. Initially, what, um, what drove me to think about the application of blockchain was specifically around the role of the remaining carbon budget. Uh, much of my colleagues, while I was doing um, my PhD, were focusing on tracking the carbon budget, which is essentially a large accounting problem that we all have. It's a single budget, we all have it, it's like having a single bank account, and we're all part of it. And blockchain is fundamentally an accounting technology. So this was the first uh, layer that we wanted to explore uh, and dividing what's at the physical Earth level, that's uh, the, the actual remaining emissions that we can put into uh, the physical atmosphere, and then the reductions. And so some of our first insights, I want to just run through a bit of some of the things that I shared this morning that also inform our, our, our uh, process uh, of research and development going forward. Um, but also inspired by things like the Climate Change Coalition, where there's a lot of projects already doing pieces of the puzzle. And so we were basically driven by thinking, how can we think of the integrated system that can connect to all of these pieces? Um, so the first uh, insight is the need of uh, separating the, the physical Earths, just like the IPCC working group went from the more political side. And one of the things we're particularly interested in is, well, we can leverage uh, flow meters and IoT to track how coal, oil, and gas comes into the system, since that's a huge lion's share of our uh, emissions that ends up in the atmosphere, as well as remote sensing. But uh, on the other aspect, it's, it's on the reductions that need to happen between business as usual and where we need to be. This becomes a much more airy world system politics because we're just divided by the different political boundaries we've created. Um, and so there we have to look at the hypothetical of our business as usual, what's the output of pledges, the gap between that and where your IPCC tells us we should be. Um, and within, within that part, um, the, the, the key issue that um, um, we started working on a year ago in collaboration with Lenny Labs at Yale is how to integrate non-state actors into the state level. And so by that, we propose a concept of nested accounting, which is not going to to it. But if any, any actor does any climate action, and the normally talk about climate action is like mitigation adaptation, but also include like certified emissions um, as part of the greenhouse gas protocol, for example. Um, for example, by a private company, that still needs to be within the geographical scope of a subnational actor that's connected to the university uh, space in the game, so we do our pilots locally. Uh, and the subnational state is still within the United States, and that has to aggregate up to the global level. Um, and that's essentially the type of a mechanism of how to get companies and uh, subnational actors that are today one of the most important champions in actually doing things around climate change rather than countries at the federal level. 
This is very relevant because if Trump gets reelected and the United States pulls out of the Paris Agreement, the We Are Still In Coalition that started after that announcement needs to have an actual mechanism to still be in, a national accounting mechanism to say who's doing what and how does that go all the way up to the aggregate level, which is what people really care. And it doesn't matter if the federal government's on the way. So these are the type of things that we've been sort of like trying to focus on. We're looking at much around the metadata associated to each, each actual level. Um, the second part is um, having an automation of, and, and this is part of the big insight that the blockchain has often related to financial technology, digital currencies, um, but much of what we think about in climate accounting does not involve that. We can use contractual automation to link the, the, the deployment of capital linked to results um, and, and uh, of any form of climate action. So this is particularly a third insight that we thought uh, relevant that kind of makes it a bit, a bit complicated because it requires a lot of the, a lot of the information that's linked to uh, proven climate value to be linked to the climate finance layer. And, and that insight itself has led us to compile those three parts that I described before. First, data consensus, the, the actual physical part that we read, the nested counting, and the automation of climate value finance dynamics into a suit of multi-domains uh, around climate that need to be integrated. There's a bigger map of this in the back. Um, some of the resolutions come out, but it starts at the planetary level and goes through uh, the world system registry that are already in place, but still need a, a bit of a digital um, push here. Climate action, MRVs, monitoring reporting verification for short. Uh, the concept of network climate markets, because the way we did accounting in the Kyoto era is very different than the one we can do in Paris. And so there's a lot, there's a, there's a lot of um, success in the bottom-up approach that Paris has, but then that also leads to a lot of heterogeneity. Um, as opposed to Kyoto, which was all more bottom up, uh, top down. Um, so that's also been part of our, our, our research agenda and mapping how these records could be connected. And if we think in terms of ledgers that are working at each level, we kind of have to have uh, ledgers being talking to each other so that that automation can happen. <coughs> uh, and uh, an important other insight is that we a lot of the work we do is in system integration, it's leveraging from systems and design thinking. So we always think about how do we make the process of reporting, of accounting, of, of interfacing with such a complex system uh, through easy, intuitive interfaces. So we think about wouldn't it be easy if we had a, a one-stop climate portal? Um, and when we start thinking about, well, let's, let's start prototyping what this would look like, um, the concept of what should underpin uh, a unified climate portal is the concept of a platform of platforms. And that's because there's already a lot of existing platforms that manage climate action data, climate action pledges, registries from countries, from cities, from companies. Um, there is a growing amount of technological companies coming from you guys, from the Climate Change Coalition, that, are, that, are, that have been leveraged in blockchain for different pieces. Um, how do these integrate? So uh, that's where the concept of platform of platform comes in. And to describe it is, you know, on the left, we see some database, and the right, some of our DLT uh, model. In terms of conventional legacy databases, often there's a, an issue around sharing data from, let's say, a private actor that shares with, let's say, CDP, that's one of the main sort of legacy platforms around this. Um, they often track who, um, uh, which one's the climate actor, what did they say in terms of climate plan, when, where. Um, but when, when that data needs to be shared, the issues around uh, privacy, and they, they always, always explain that it's very sensitive information. But the key part of some of the technology that we leverage today, the transparency does not have to compromise privacy. Um, and so there's a lot of things that we want to work around pilots on how to be able to mask uh, the sensitive part of the data so that at the aggregate insight, the key part of what we want to um, know for a, a global climate system, um, that's something that we then mask and integrate into a ledger record. If, if you're running a, a climate distribution ledger platform, um, then the main concept to think about there is because there's a lot of computer watching ecosystems, is how do we think about how a ledger of ledgers would work? 
And so in the key collaboration layer between the, the blockchain community is around inter-blockchain communication protocols. Uh, so maybe one platform is using IoT and DLT for creating certified carbon emissions, um, but maybe they can be traded into an international trading law that's in a different way. So how can we reconcile these um, across uh, accounting systems? This is obviously relevant, and, and I would probably say that most of what we've seen, and, and, and I don't know if the, the coalition, uh, we'd have to see at the map, how they're, they're mapped out, but um, blockchain has been used a lot for the digital transformation of these generation of these certificates that have underpinned assets in the data. But the key question to ask is also how will we achieve interoperability and fungibility between these digital assets here. They have the capacity to be a whole asset class, and Article 6 of the Paris Agreement also provides a lot of um, incentives for this to happen at an international level. Um, so that's definitely part of, part of the, the agenda that inspired us for, for an integrated system. Uh, but probably the most important insight is around radical open source collaboration. It's really doing things in, in a different way that, that we've been doing it. And we've talked about the platform of platforms, the ledger of ledgers, we kind of have to leverage a network of networks on the social level, at the company level, at the organizational level, through an open innovation process to understand the shared technology that can help us interoperate APIs, shared protocols, um, and understand the, the realm of, of uh, climate accounting uh, from the planet down to the individual as part of a digital public good. Um, very much how we see as uh, most open source uh, software that we use today. Um, so we spent the summer uh, thinking about how to prototype this ambitious project, and we definitely can't do it alone, but at least we can map out some of the key parts so that everyone that's working on different pieces can feel identified, and then we can start the conversation, and, and I think today has been a critical day around starting that conversation. Um, these are just different layers of the software platform of platforms the way we presented, which is a, a common layer that integrates existing legacy systems, uh, but that can be bypassed and go directly to ledger records through um, APIs and the front end portal. Um, I know that the, the details are not very clear, but they're, they're actually right there in the back and you can see them. Um, and what you see, this is kind of like the basic function that blockchain is, and kind of shows that blockchain doesn't solve the whole problem, it's just a specific layer. Um, those six insights that, I, that I've shared, uh, we've combined into uh, proposing the architecture of an integrated system that, that there's a prototype there in the back. There's those five climate domains across the different software stacks. Um, and that's what it informs how these records can link to each other into a, into a, a link system. Um, and the next thing after proposing a draft of a system architecture was to start prototyping uh, the user interface. And so um, first thing we did is we thought, well, there needs to be a public interfacing um, uh, version that always starts with like, what, what are the key insights at the commentary level? It's, with the, the no fake news information about the planet in terms of CO2 and temperature. Um, and then uh, going into uh, reviewing, for example, the Earth level, the, the nation state level going into the United States, and any form of record that are bringing up within the US, subnational levels going into the state of New York, opening into the, the city of New York, which has its own climate pledge and its current state of action tracking. Uh, but then when we log in, uh, for example, we started working with an energy company that has its own pledges. They're an off branch of Iberdrola, Spain. And they operate in 22 states here in the United States. So we have to map all the, the assets, the physical assets involved in climate action. For example, looking at Connecticut, they are working on now to pilot the fuel cell, the solar array, so that what happens here can be accounted across those geographical scopes. Um, Reviewing the information to be able to dispute, just like in a GitHub repository, uh, adding new projects. See, these are some of, some of the key functionalities that we've been um, putting together mostly to start informing also the, the, the systems layer. So the interface uh, always informs the, the backend as well. And, and that the structure of the backend can help how all the different pieces of the puzzle could eventually um, orchestrate together. Um, then we did a workshop this morning, and we're going to share. I think if we have an email list, we can blast a bit of what happened. But 
basically what, what I had to share um, to you today. And um, just inspired to have uh, the ecosystem of, of the, the organizations at the forefront of this and just hoping that uh, what we're doing can eventually help us bring together a, a common system. Uh, for that, I'm going to give it back to Tom for the next speaker. Global Climate Action Data Center, building the brain for global climate 
action, coordination, incentivization. And it's the, the idea is that here is a UN aligned global flagship initiative with a grand vision, a strong knowledge base, a plan, and an address. And uh, the initiative that Martin has presented is really in terms of the technological uh, concept and uh, the data architecture perfect and uh, it's somehow uh, a key element of what we are uh, looking at but in order to get it from an uh, academic concept and even a uh, running prototype into a tool that is being used by all the different stakeholders there are additional components necessary it's social innovation needed, there is a standard setting needed, methodologies need to be created, there needs to be co-working space and uh, one of the elements uh, that uh, we are uh, aiming to set up is uh, with the people center, uh, co-working space, uh, event space uh, uh, next to the United Nations on the lower picture you see it's a vision, it's a, for the time being there is an empty plot of land, three blocks uh, uh, large uh, and uh, we think that their non-state actors should create uh, really uh, a, a space uh, to engage and to support uh, the work of the United Nations with entrepreneurial solutions, with data, with culture, educational activities and so on. And uh, the above uh, image is from a space that we are looking at uh, together with the Blue Planet uh, Alliance, Hank Rogers, uh, you've heard him. Uh, he uh, is uh, creating an investors alliance uh, that uh, buys uh, here an office space where our global um, action data center uh, would be then also hosted. And, uh, there is uh, the need in general to have a more uh, action of uh, the different stakeholders is to uh, connect these local actions with uh, different resource holders and for, uh, for getting this uh, bridge working between the resource holders and the action takers there is data plays a very essential role and uh, with the uh, uh, initiative and uh, uh, local, uh, climate, uh, open climate platform presented by Martin, there is uh, a great uh, backbone already there, but uh, the Climate Change Coalition has an additional assets that we are framing now together in this project initiative of a Global Climate Action Data Center. The members have uh, expertise in different areas on the ground and uh, completely connecting with millions of users and their data. The Climate Change Coalition uh, has been uh, co-founded by the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. Uh, of course, uh, the Open Climate Initiative is uh, one of the key assets also of the initiative. Uh, another asset is that uh, my organization has accreditations to the United Nations, so we are able to host uh, events here at the United Nations, but also at the UN Climate Change Conferences, at the COPs. Uh, we've had them before and we are going to do it also in the future. Uh, we have the Gotcha Foundation, uh, Gotcha Global Generals Foundation New York, which is already an existing 501c3. Uh, tax exempt uh, organization in the US which can receive donations uh, in a, uh, and uh, donors can make a tax write off, which is an important point for many foundations. Uh, and uh, we uh, have also a cooperation with the uh, office of the president of the General Assembly. This is an image from an event which we've had about SDG uh, implementation and action the Lake Chad Basin region. It was on the 5th of August. Martin was there, uh, Deborah Johnson, uh, Catherine Foster, and Tom was with us on the um, uh, video link. And uh, so we've explained there how this kind of uh, data support uh, can unlock global climate finance for regions like the Lake Chad Basin region and uh, now this uh, the plan is that uh, we will have a high level thematic debate 
during the uh, 74th session of the UN General Assembly on exactly this topic to demonstrate concretely how uh, the solutions look like that will unlock climate finance for African regions. So we, as we have worked on, in the field of climate philanthropy already for years now, uh, uh, and we have the connections uh, to the resource holders there, and with this uh, ready for implementation projects now that are coming up, we think that uh, we can uh, get on another level soon as a coalition of climate change coalition uh, uh, members that are working together. And uh, there are also resource partners like the People's Prize. We have uh, Bobby Kia here today. He has complete uh, uh, philanthropy resources and a very uh, innovative uh, crowdfunding uh, platform which helps to identify innovative solutions and to finance them that uh, can help also to show how this uh, open climate platform can uh, really connect, <laughs> uh, be uh, of use for people who take in an entrepreneurial context uh, climate action. We are partnering with the South African regional government of KwaZulu-Natal and uh, the idea is that uh, the information systems that we develop here that uh, they will be applied in the context of the CO2 tax uh, that has been implemented or uh, there is a bill that has been passed but they are still uh, struggling on how to set the uh, system right that the uh, revenues will be used properly and uh, this information that we are working on should they have demonstrated also that uh, with the appropriate uh, data systems climate finance can be unlocked and uh, impact uh, scale. So uh, we have great synergies uh, with uh, the climate change coalition as far uh, as the physical infrastructure is concerned. It is uh, a co-working space opportunity. We can work together on global standard setting for climate action impact evaluation and data exchange protocols. We can work together on joint global governance innovation learning in the global climate action governance space, how to design innovative multi-stakeholder partnerships, how to use the possibility of uh, the Austrian legislation of setting up quasi-international organizations, and in general global commons resource management, digital public goods uh, uh, management uh, that uh, is uh, knowledge that our members can bring in. We have this project uh, initiative, we have an initial phase now up to COP25. We want to pre uh, prepare a professional deck uh, for investors and for the donors. Uh, we have to develop our cooperation framework and an agreement among the participating partners, communications materials for philanthropy and social impact investment, uh, investment platforms and journals, interviews or whatever that we will place in the relevant media so that uh, resource holders will get aware of us. So we have to attend events and uh, do networking with potential investors and uh, the, the project initiative and the partners uh, will then be presented at COP25 in Chile in December. We will have a side event and a press conference and we hope that there we will already have resource partners who will also be there with us. Let's say we, for the initial phase, uh, we envisage $25,000, but in the long term uh, perspective, the price tag for such a package uh, which could bring climate action data management uh, infrastructure uh, into orbit and uh, be used uh, properly by the relevant stakeholders, that uh, $10 million would be the range uh, in which we would like to operate. And that's all as proposals on how to the climate change coalition uh, community and also to resource holders to invest in us uh, because the world does not have time to really uh, delay uh, the implementation of the Paris Agreement that we are lagging very far behind. Uh, there was a global stock take of UNDP and UN Climate Change Secretariat represented last week and uh, it shows that uh, the national uh, the determined contributions, the plans are really totally behind what is needed and that the concrete action plans are low and that the financing is even lower 
and at the end it says the trans there are only seven countries out of the uh, survey 140. Only seven had a, a clear framework for transparency, and uh, it's clear that if this transparency and climate action accounting framework <coughs> would be well developed, then there would be more money, there would be more uh, action plans, and the national strategies would be more demanding. So if we look uh, about transparency at the end, but actually it needs to be at the beginning and then the climate action economy uh, will function and it's a huge opportunity also and um, let's work on it together. Uh, that missing integration. Uh, 
Uh, of course, we want to focus on efficiency, transparency, accountability, extensibility, scalability, all, all of those good things. But what's really new here that I want to emphasize to you is that what we're proposing is a systematic applied integration of a suite of tools and test beds that combine all these elements to deliberately work together and create synergies among what we like to call the moving parts. So what are the moving parts as far as adaptation measure is concerned? Um, blockchain and other digital tools, standard systems, a unique contribution known as the vulnerability reduction credit, which I'll come back to. All of these moving parts will better align adaptation solutions with finance, and we believe will usher in a new era of accelerated, coordinated, and I might say, transformational adaptation action. So, to re-emphasize what adaptation ledger is all about, and uh, it calls for um, a, an open mind to uh, visualize how we plan to bring together all these moving parts, namely blockchain and other digital technologies, innovation with governance and standards, vulnerability reduction credit and its associated framework, basically a unified metric for measuring adaptation success. All of that coming together and creating synergies for advanced solutions for adaptation and resilience. Vulnerability reduction credit could be um, a session in itself, and uh, someday we'll make that session available through one of our webinars. Uh, but uh, for today's purposes, the vulnerability reduction credit uh, developed principally by the Higher Ground Foundation and Adaptation Ledger partner Carl Schultz is a metric for adaptation success. It's a standard framework that would assess the production of vulnerability and climate change impacts. And it's gone through an extensive vetting process over the last several years, and there is an entire uh, implementation framework that is readily to, ready to be utilized and adaptation ledger intends to utilize it. You've seen some interesting slides even in this session. Some of them tend to blend all together, uh, look the same, but let me explain this one in simple terms. Adaptation ledger, the enterprise, is in the blue section of this diagram. Two key components are an integrated platform and specific applications uh, for adaptation solutions. In the green, the inputs are a range of uh, partners, data sets, approaches. In the brown, uh, those are the outputs, mostly in the form of uh, implementation of our specific applications. What I'd like to share with you is what I mean by specific application. The range of potential specific applications, or as we call them, analysis, is enormous. The parameters will depend on the scale, the sector, the desired goals of a given solution. But in general, a specific adaptation from adaptation ledger will be given two basic questions. One, is there clear added value to utilize distributed ledgers or allied digital technologies, vulnerability reduction credits, and next generation standards? moving parts. And secondly, are there stakeholders involved who do not know or trust each other and need to share and verify information? Those are the two key considerations, along with things like governance, incentive regimes, risk management, and evaluation. So we are initially starting off um, looking at specific applications in two contexts. The first one is for coastal resilience. The second one is agricultural supply chains. 
coastal resilience, as indicated in this graphic, uh, a main concern in uh, hurricanes, storm surge, uh, sea level rise. What we are attempting to do in building our coastal impact app is connect a range of data with a given project. Environmental features, economic features, and the comparison of scenarios. As a visual, what we anticipate uh, being able to uh, generate here is a dashboard of considerations that can be used by local communities, governmental entities, multilateral development banks, uh, property owners. Uh, the range of uh, users is uh, truly broad for uh, the potential use of our coastal resilience app. The other app that we are already working on is um, in a, a particular agricultural supply chain and we came across an, an interesting situation uh, with the coffee supply chain. Coffee supply chain particularly in Central America, is uh, potentially being disrupted by uh, mm -hmm. an increasing range of coffee rust, uh, a fungal disease affecting the uh, coffee leaves. So why are we interested uh, in that? The, the jury is still out on whether there's simply a correlation or causation between climate change and uh, coffee rust. Uh, but uh, the concerns are real and the disruptions that are occurring are real. Uh, it has the potential to affect the entire coffee supply chain, which is indicated in uh, this graphic, it is fairly complex. Another good reason for utilizing some of the advantages of distributed ledger technology. Um, but we're focusing uh, largely on the most vulnerable part of the supply chain namely the small farmers who are already being robbed by price volatility and by the uh, inability to bring uh, to scale their um, operations in uh, coffee growing. They lack the technical knowledge uh, for a variety of things, including the significant uh, uh, advantage if they were able to qualify for certain voluntary certifications, whether uh, fair trade or sustainability oriented. On top of that, as I mentioned, climate change is likely exacerbating the situation with coffee rust. And even if it didn't have anything to do with coffee rust, uh, and again, we're sitting out to further document that, uh, the vulnerability at the small or farmer level creates another adaptation issue which is climate migration, and an important topic beyond the scope of our uh, discussion today, but important to recognize the bigger picture. Our solution will incorporate blockchain, selected data sets, will utilize uh, sensors on the ground, possibly drone technology, satellite technology, um, vulnerability reduction credits, and innovative approaches to governance, Partnerships, public-private public partnerships, uh, payments for business and services as some examples of innovative governance. And what we're developing is really an adaptation plugin uh, that will fit with uh, pre-existing uh, blockchain uh, solutions for supply chain. Uh, blockchain solutions for supply chains generically exist. Uh, we haven't found one that uh, casts an eye on the adaptation issues, and that's what we hope to provide. Within the Climate Change Coalition, uh, we intend to continue to play a lead role in the coalition, um, helping to set the agenda for future work on adaptation and resilience. Uh, I am the co lead on the Climate Change Coalition's Adaptation Committee, and so uh, with my co-leader, Carl Schultz, we expect to move forward on uh, capacity and 
capacity building and activities on adaptation and resilience within the coalition. Uh, adaptation lecture, through its own work, will provide something of a roadmap and recommendations uh, that will support um, the work of the climate change coalition and help achieve the goals of the Paris Agreement. Uh, in the past year, we have benefited from funding to flesh out uh, our integrated platform and begin work on the specific applications that I've mentioned through uh, an award from uh, the Royal Bank of Canada. Uh, we're poised uh, to follow up with additional phases of work, again, both in building out our integrated platform and in implementing specific application pilots. What that means is that uh, we are looking for partners uh, on pilot projects, demo pilots. Um, again, they need not be limited to coastal resilience or agricultural supply chains. Um, we uh, cover uh, the waterfront on uh, adaptation issues, but we do think that there are some advantages in working with us from uh, the finance level, the community level, and the policy maker level. Uh, there's a lot more to say about all of our activities. Time will not permit me to go into more detail here. Uh, our website, adaptationledger.com, uh, uh, contains uh, some background documents, uh, some uh, press releases, and other updates that you may find useful. And in the next month or so, we expect to make available to you all through our website and otherwise the public reports that uh, will result from our phase one activities funded by the Portal Bank of Canada. And uh, if you'd like to contact me uh, after this event, uh, there's my contact information on the title of the subject. Also, one 
owner of a project of reducing emission and some of their personalities speaking about uh, the initiative that I will present you.
It's all some people speaking uh, about carbon market, but about the project of uh, reduction and capture of CO2. So, in this slide, we can see the main elements of the carbon market. In one side, we have the projects. The projects normally are forest dedicated uh, for conservation or reforest to report. Or oh, in this side, we have companies. In Colombia, we have a carbon tax. The carbon tax in Colombia is equivalent to five dollars for every ton of CO2. So the big companies who are consuming uh, the oil and the combustible, they have to pay this tax. So there is an opportunity. Uh, that the, gover the government offers the opportunity to demonstrate that if they are carbon, uh, the port free, the port free uh, is neutral, they, they can don't pay to start. So if they give, uh, if they appear some certificates of reduction, they can pay to start. So, this is how the cycle is, is done. The, the companies can directly finance the project, the, of, from the, the forest, and they can also finance the energy renewable resources. But there is something in the middle that is needed. We need, or we see that in the video, the trust. So that's why eco registry exists. This uh, carbon tax in Colombia exists since two years ago. And the last year it was able to, to present to the government a paper and make it in an Excel document uh, with the tone of CO2 that <laughs> captured a project. So it's so difficult to transit that kind of document. Uh, Eco Registry find this situation and spoke with the government, spoke with companies, with the project owners, and offer a platform by like, every document and every CO2 is packed in the blockchain. So we have no talk about the documents that support the mission of every certificate. We have no doubt of who is the owner of every certificate. And also, we will see in the next slide, we implement a system to burn every CO2 that is present for the tax. So, it's not possible to take again what CO2 that was predicted in the market. So it's uh, literally the truth. And how we did, how we did that? Um, was done so, 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 yeah. um, it's important to, to check which kind of protocol we are implemented. Uh, right now, Eco Registry is working with multi-chain that is open source client with um, is done with the by Bitcoin protocols and it's very simple to use because you do a uh, multiple assets it's very easy to token to tokenize every CO2 ton and uh, it's also possible to publish that to make a stream of information and you have the trustability who publishes every data, who publishes every stream. And, and you can add information in JSON format. So it's really uh, friendly to, to manage that information. Also, if you want, you can add uh, text or photos, but in blockchain is not so good to put all the information that. But with the JSON, you can put a very easy the hashes of every document, so it's very easy to follow uh, the, 
which kind of documents support every emission, support every verification and validation. All the process of from a project to have these certificates for the of emissions. And I do this because we are considering to use a maybe next year quorum the retailer is no sure but maybe you heard that the next year was a colonist and ah, it's quorum. <laughs> but the chain what happened? <laughs> no, it's because but this decision is not because the blockchain that has a, a high impact, but it's more because Azure and Amazon they offer the full managed services. So if you, we want to make the platform uh, really strong and serverless, so the only one blockchain that is open in this kind of mode is in, uh, right now is Ethereum in Azure. So maybe if we want to implement for hardware, uh, thinking in the hardware implementation, maybe we will take uh, Ethereum the next year. Uh, which kind of characteristics has multi-chain on our uh, blockchain? It's a permissionless blockchain. In the future, we will think to do an open blockchain. But right now, it's working with permissionless blockchain by proof of authority. Uh, we have, we implement the carbon offset tokenization. Uh, we have the asset forming. How do we have the public data stream? So, maybe, you are thinking who I am. Uh, I am Juan Manuel. I come from Colombia and I work for XM. Uh, last year, I come for, for first time in USA, uh, in San Francisco, and also with the climate change coalition in uh, And I, I spoke that we are thinking to do something. So we last year we had an idea. And I would like to come this year and speak. Yeah, we already do something, and we have something to show, and we have a lot of things that we are uh, working hard to do. And we will present it here with another kind, another platforms. But uh, XM is a company that uh, very innovative. But the main reason of XM is is the um, independent system operator in Colombia. So we manage the, the grid energy in Colombia, but also we manage the wholesale energy market. Uh, one uh, of the interesting thing here is that we did an alliance, so a partnership with a small startup. We find an startup in Colombia and they are also willing to do something with blockchain for the register of the carbon offset. And we find this other in the, in the way doing something similar, but from a big company and, and a startup. And we, yeah, we can go together and we can do something, something together. And this helps us a lot to do the registry, uh, the echo registry also in record time. Uh, our first meeting was in January, and then in May we was in Bogota launching this official with the uh, environmental minister in Col uh, from Colombia, speaking about this in initiative. We are under the umbrella of a big company. XN is a subsidiary of ESA. Uh, ESA is the largest company of transmission in America present from Mexico to Chile. Uh, the, main, uh, the main business is the energy transmission. But ESA also has uh, another business like information and communication technology uh, to companies who provide the, the internet infrastructure for the military in Colombia, for the military army also in Peru and other countries and also uh, provide the internet infrastructure for the distributors in Colombia and other, com and other countries. Uh, it's a home, the road concessions, uh, 
mainly Chile has a investment vehicle in Brazil and real time system manager the big company in this kind of cluster is Excel who manage the, the grid and the world solar energy market in Colombia. The common thing in every business are the connections. So ESA is something or it's a company who uh, try to connect everything but it co connect in a sustainable way and yes, may, maybe pay responsibility for every asset in every business. That's why we have the support from the, the big company ESA to do something different and something new that is eco-realistic, that is a new type of business, but they are implementing new technologies to combat the climate change, to do something uh, with our environment. These are the SDG that eco-realistic touches directly, uh, energy industry, innovation and infrastructure, uh, is an example of innovation, so you see. Uh, we are working to implement the standards to allow how to account the renewable energy. So to do easy this method to provide that every megawatt per hour that each generator helps to reduce the CO2 emissions. So it's an action directly with the climate action and we are working in this the life and land. And it's an example of partnership for the world. And thank you all. Uh, here is the website, uh, ecoregistry.io. Sorry because right now it's just in Spanish, but we are working to translate it. And this is my contact, uh, with my WhatsApp. Thank you. Thank you very much, Juan, for the presentation coming from Colombia. And I uh, uh, want to also acknowledge that within the Climate Change Coalition, members self-organize into teams, whether it was adaptation um, or regionally, uh, such as Latin America, which happens to be our most active team with dozens of members and I think over 10 countries. And so uh, Juan is the Latin American team leader and with COP25 uh, being in COP and right in the heart of uh, Latin America, um, He's going to be a, a core partner at the next climate change coalition meetings that are, and events that are being planned um, for Chile in December. So thank you very much again. So I've noticed that the, uh, the food has arrived and we're running a little uh, beyond our original schedule. So I'm going to propose that we still have other members that are going to come up for quick presentations, four or five minutes, so that you get a better sense. But in the meantime, um, because I'm not sure how much more time we have past seven, and the food is ready, if you'd like to get some, some finger food and something to drink while things are happening, because we certainly can't finish that ourselves, so we have to keep it in that regard. Um, so I'm going to start uh, inviting coalition members.